Hey, this is a uh, question I get uh, asked a lot, so I need to return to it, apparently. Um, what you... Obviously, I've made a lot of criteria, criteria for you purchasing the best the DSLR. Whether it's a primary camera, an upgrade, or a secondary, you need to think about uh, a cost consideration, what it is you're going to be doing with it. When you ask me a question like, uh, What's the best current camera that I can get? I mean, that's a really broad question, and I get it asked get asked that question all the time. Or what's the best I can get for a thousand dollars or fifteen hundred dollars? I mean, while you know the window is somewhat narrow there, depending on uh, what your budget is, you know I, I can't answer a question like that directly because I'm not being perfectly objective to be helpful to you. You know, I need to know what it is you're going to be doing with it. You know, do you have enough lenses? You know, uh, do you necessarily need another camera? Or do you need a backup? Or you say, hey, I've got a great camera. You know, all cameras fail eventually and I go down. I shoot a lot. I mean, what's a great secondary camera? If I have an X, X budget, then what should I get? Then, you know, that's, that's a really good question. And uh, if you know what it is your criteria are and what your budget is and you're up for either an upgrade or a backup camera, you know, then we can make a logical choice. I'm not interested in imposing whatever degree anybody thinks I do that, that you know, I should never be doing that, and hopefully I don't, um, you know, be subjective in giving answers to you, because what I shoot and what you shoot are obviously two different things, they may be the same, but all things being equal, regardless of what your budget is, I mean, you have to ask yourself a few questions. You know, number one, are you shooting weddings and commercial work? Are you doing this as pro work? Number two, can you write this off on your taxes, you know, at the end of the year because you're having an income from this? You know, number three, are you just stinking rich and you don't give a damn and you want to know what's the best that you can get? That's usually not the case with most people. Or, uh, you know, also, another consideration is messing around in post, too. A lot of people do spray and pray and shoot a lot of pictures, and then they don't realize if they get something like this, or they've been shooting an old dinosaur, uh, Nikon or Canon for a while, they get a 24 megapixel Nikon DSLR, and, uh, you know, you can certainly shoot in JPEG, but, I mean, you're getting an expensive camera, so hopefully you can have a huge wide latitude of uh, post-processing with uh, RAW files, 14-bit RAW files, you have to ask yourself, you know, do you have the computer to uh, process those speedily? Because it becomes extremely tiresome to mess with, uh, you know, the raw file outputs on the Nikon uh, D710 or the Nikon D750, much less the uh, Nikon D810 and what's going to be coming down the road. I mean, even with a quad-core processor and 32 gig of RAM, messing with the raw file outputs on the Nikon D810 can be a pain in the crotch. I mean, it's, it's nightmarish when you're taking, you know, five, six hundred shots in a day, if not more, then it becomes a problem. And, uh, you know, you're just sitting here, well, you know, you know, fantasizing, hanging yourself from a noose like I do sometimes. And, you know, that's certainly an important consideration. I mean, are you a nature or sports shooter and you need to crop the hell out of your shots? I mean, uh, is it the case that you've already got like a Nikon D750 or a Nikon D710 and you say, well, I, uh, you know, I've got like a fifteen hundred or twelve hundred dollar budget. Let's say I got twelve hundred dollars, you know, and I've got all the lenses that I need, and I want a really good hardcore backup camera, something I can beat the crap out of, and it's good for you know taking, going out and taking professional shots, and that's you know, my other camera I'm in a baby, but I want something as a good backup that I could take out like in the mud and the muck, and I can go out and take a you know a beater lens and have this be my beater camera, then. You know, nothing beats the old Japanese cameras. I'm not saying that the Nikon D810 isn't wonderful, but these things are built like tanks. You obviously will draw the conclusion that, like, the Nikon D700 or the Nikon D3, you know, are old or uh, long in the tooth, quote-unquote, but realistically we have to take into some, some considerations that nobody does and you don't read in camera magazines, and that is that this 12-megapixel camera, you know, we're still printing out 20 by 30s max, really, today, and that's the same thing you were doing back in 2009. So realistically, you know, are you a nature shooter? Are you going to be cropping the hell out of your shots? Do you need super, super high uh, ISO uh, performance like you do on the Nikon? Most people don't. You know, if you're a club shooter, 
or you're, uh, you know, doing astro work, or, uh, you know, you're shooting uh, raves and e evening parties and whatnot, and you need ultra high SO performance, that's perfectly understandable. Is that the case for most people? No, but I mean, you have to tell me those things so that I can be perfectly um, objective and be helpful to you, because I just can't give blanket statements. Not only one, not only number one, am I doing you a disservice, Number two, I'm punching myself in the face by, you know, answering a broad question like that without asking more specific questions of you. What is your budget? What you're shooting? Is it a tax write-off? Are you doing nature photography, sports photography, or low-light photography? What your budget is realistically? Is it an upgrade camera? Realistically, is it a replacement camera for an old crappy camera that you got? Or is it a secondary camera, a backup camera? So I have to ask those questions, and sometimes it irritates you folks, but that's just me trying to be helpful, because otherwise I'm doing both you a disservice and I'm insulting myself. And uh, I wouldn't want anybody else to treat me that way. If I asked someone and said, hey, what's the best car? Well, this is the best car. Well, he didn't even ask me what I do, you know? Do I drive like a little old lady, or do I drive like a speed demon? I mean... Do I need, uh, you know, a tank, or do I need some sort of a fiberglass sports car? I mean, the guy doesn't know what sort of damn car I want to drive, and it's the same true of uh, DSLRs. Um, getting back to the advantages of, like, the old Nikon D700 and D3s, these are made in Japan, they're ready to rock, and they're still electronics, obviously, but they're, they're made to rock and roll for, for durable eternity, up to a point, obviously. But, you know, they're still printing out 20 by 30s back in 2009. I mean, it's like, talk about 2009, we're talking six, six, you know, six plus years ago, like, you know, it's a Stone Age or something. And technology, that kind of is a Stone Age. But when it comes to prints, unless you're doing some real heavy cropping, it certainly isn't. I mean, it's, it's perfectly, it kind of blows people's minds. And you say, well, you can print out exquisite 20, this used to be a $6,000 camera, and it still is, it's just value isn't worth that much. As far as the case of Nikon D700, it's a $700 camera, and this being between $1,200 and $1,500, $1,600, an Nikon D3. The other serious awesome advantage is when you got about five or 600 shots, um, not only the compact flash car is really cheap, uh, but also uh, uh, editing and posts with the 12 megapixel uh, RAW files, it's a whole lot easier than <laughs> with the Nikon D750 and the D810. I mean, it's actually a pure pleasure and joy. Um, you know, it, it's... Uh, unless you're doing it for a gig, you know, a commercial gig or a wedding or whatnot, you have to ask yourself realistically, do I need to crop the piss out of it? Or if I throw a 100mm macro lens on this, for example, is this more than enough? I'm going to print out a 20 by 30 or, or a 8 and a half by, uh, you know, 8 by 10 and the answer, of course, is yes. Well, it was good for printing back in 2009, it's certainly good today. Um, these will actually rock a lot longer on shutter counts. Typically what you need to keep them at is uh, basically somewhere between 60 to 90,000 shutter clicks or below. That's either the Nikon D3 or the Nikon D700. D700 is typically $700, Nikon D3 typically $1,200. Although it's hard to find one like this with a low shutter count, most of them have had the piss ragged out of them. Um, so, those are the advantages. Obviously, the disadvantages are that you don't have a warranty. I mean, you can get insurance, depending on what country you live in. In the United States, you can get inland marine insurance. And, uh, you know, you can have your camera covered for damage. I mean, that, that applies to all Nikon DSLRs. But these are a lot more joy to shoot. Why are they more joy to shoot? It's easier to mess with them in post. And they're old beater cameras that were, you know, they're designed like tanks in 2009 in Japan, and they're superior craftsmanship. It's not saying the Nikon D750 is any less of a camera, nor is the $3,000, it's a little cheaper now, but basically still $3,000 Nikon D810. I mean, this is, this is exquisite, but it's a pain in the crotch to edit and post. And uh, I'm not dragging this baby or the other Nikon D810 out in the woods in the muck and the mud. I mean, that's what I take the D700 or the D3 out there for. I'm not, I'm not taking that. You know, ultimately, it's meant to be used, and I do use them. I'm not sitting there staring at them like objects of art. Um, but realistically, you know, I've got a lot of Nikon DSLRs, and I know what I'm going to be doing with something. I pre-plan the day. Then I'm not going to bring this with me out to, like, uh, you know... Uh, some place where there's going to be a lot of muck and mud flying about, you know, I'll just take the D3 or the Nikon D700, even the D750. You know, I've got insurance on all of them, that isn't an issue, but also the considerations are in editing and post. But getting to the last point, since everybody accuses me of being repetitive, sorry, 
is that you need to ask yourself, you know, are you shooting weddings or commercial work? You know, can you write this uh, camera off in your taxes? You know, are you rich and you don't give a damn? You just want to know what's the best? Um, and also, you have to ask yourself, if you're taking 600 shots in the day, which I mean, typically, you know, what I do, I mean, five to a thousand plus shots in a day, you know, screwing around with them, those huge raw files and posts, I mean, it gets, you know, I go to bed at like six o'clock in the morning or something, it just, it's tiresome. I mean, if you're getting paid to do it, that's wonderful. If you're doing it for yourself, it will very quickly suck the fun right out of photography. Not literally, I mean, it, it kind of does, though. <laughs> um, I said, are you cropping the hell out of your shots? So when you're asking me these questions like, you know, what's the best camera to get? I need a lot more specifics, otherwise I'm doing an injustice to you, and I'm making an ass out of myself, and I don't want either one of those to happen or be the case. I'd like to be as helpful to you as possible. Thanks for watching my latest video and drop a buck or two. Go tell me to jump off a cliff. Thank you for watching. Catch you later. Bye.